at work the other day asked me a question. He said, you know, should I get married? I said, well, how old are you? He said, I'm 21. And I said, well, because he was Somali, I was, I said that, um, his culture is a lot different than the typical American culture. And so there's a, ver- there's a variation there because the customs of marriage is a little bit different. Uh, it can have multiple wives and the young ladies are raised differently. Now, I know many of them now being born in America and raised in a in this society although they are still raised with traditional values they have been exposed to an alternative way of thinking and alternative options so this obviously is going to influence and alter and change even their culture over time so I said well I'm not really an expert in that but I have been married over a decade before in my life and if uh, you knew who I was and before marriage you knew that I was a you know my friends would tell you I was a proponent of marriage I've always been a more of a relationship type person um, I was I, I grew up in a traditional family my father and mother stayed together my grandparents were together for 66 years so I've been a advocate or a proponent for marriage but after being buried after being married I have come to realize the reality of the experience of marriage here in America and I'm now able to compare it to the ideology or the idea that I had of what marriage is or it should be and so now we're living in an age where we have you know a spillover of of men who are now forming what you would call either communities or movements called red pill movements and passport bros and they even got black pill and you know everything in between purple pill and all these different types of pills now because there's communities men who have really been victimized in within the marriage system or by the marriage system which initially begins with the woman. And so what we are is free when we're single. Uh, We're not really under anyone's jurisdiction. But as soon as we get married, we're taken to court. And we do this voluntarily because we're in love <laughs> right we we're thinking in terms of making our relationship official for financial reasons beneficiary reasons that has to do with finance and so now 
as a man we're signing our rights away and giving a a system and the woman jurisdiction over us as a human being so now according to the marital laws here in America which are a martial law against men specifically black men but all men are affected in a very similar way it's just our culture or subculture is more inflamed it's escalated the rates are higher and the the process is more dramatic for us more hostile and so we get involved with a female who we are either attracted to or in some way feel compelled to and we typically have in our minds that we're going to start a family this is this is what we're doing for the sake of the family for the sake of the children and for love to respect that woman and this is how we've been conditioned in a very eurocentric modern concept of marriage because this isn't biblically backed you know the story right after Adam and Eve after Cain finds his wife in the city of Nod and bore Enoch that all led to the story of Lamech and Lamech or Lamech however you want to pronounce his name had two wives Adah and Zillah one named after Adam A-D-A-H Ada and Zilla because he was a killer Lamech the father of Noah so polygamy is in Genesis and then Abram who came from Ur Babylonia, Mesopotamia Sumar whatever you want to call that region over there the modern day Iraq he comes from what we would call today Iraq and he goes westward across the fertile crescent into the land of Canaan and then even further southward because of famine into the land of Kemet now we call this land Egypt And he did some deception between him and his wife. And they leave with livestock, including slaves. So then in chapter 12, Abram has this has this encounter in Egypt few chapters later he's having a child with Hagar an Egyptian bond servant his, his child's name is Ishmael his firstborn but because he is mulatto he's been recognized as the son of promise so later Sarah has this, her son and orders Hagar and Ishmael to be cast away or outcast but God blessed them so now Abram has two wives and two sons and before the end of his age he married another Keturah and had six more sons 
I say all of this to say that, that even in the biblical scriptures does not suggest that man is monogamous but the cultural implies that a man is or should be or supposed to be so we are giving our lives to a corrupt system in which is imposing unrealistic expectations on us knowing that most men according to their nature will end up failing express especially with the pressures that the modern woman has been raised to imply or inflict upon that man meaning that she's going to use intimacy or the deprivation of intimacy as a weapon or a tool of manipulation she doesn't get her way she's going to withhold it from you she wants something she's going to try to use it to get that from you this is sexually immoral because her appetite isn't the same as yours as a male a male can continually procreate whereas a woman can only give birth once a year to one for one man one seed a year but a man can impregnate thousands of women and I'm not suggesting that he should I'm not saying, suggesting that we should be acting like Genghis Khan out here and I'm not justifying lewd behavior lustful behavior what I'm saying is is that most men are being held hostage by their nature And women take pleasure into doing this because they resent the freedoms that men have that they don't have and they relish in the freedoms that they have that men don't have so they expect you to pay they expect you to to be their security but they don't want you to get service they don't want you to to be pleasured by others so they are like patrol officers their life existence begins to become about regulating where you are who are you talking to what are you looking at your facial expressions making sure that you're not too confident is to seek and to lock down and clean and so we have a responsibility as middle aged men to share with the younger men the truth about our experience because that is one thing you will not hear anyone say well what is the experience like living with a black woman living with a modern woman how does she make you feel in long term relationships because there's a lot of baiting and switching going around we'll talk about that in the next episode Episode, the bait and switch where they act one way in the beginning and then once they have the committed relationship everything shuts off so we have to tell the young men the truth so that they can use this knowledge to make wiser de decisions and so that they can prioritize what's important in their lives going forth